Okay, let's look at this question from November 2016. It says a generator is shown below. Assume that the coil is in a vertical position. Is the generator above AC or DC? Give a reason for the answer. Well, if you have a look here, how do you tell the difference? You have to look at the rings and you can clearly see that this is a split ring. So the moment you have a split ring, you know that it is DC because there's a split ring or a commutator a commutator because these allow the current to continue to flow in the same direction throughout the circuit. Okay, sketch an induced EMF versus time graph for one complete rotation of the coil. The coil starts turning from the vertical position. So if you have a look here, if when the coil is vertical, the lines of magnetic lines of force are running like this. And when the coil is vertical, it's not cutting any lines of force. So then we know that uh, the EMF will be at a minimum. Okay. So this is also a DC generator. So we're not going to get the sine curve. Okay. We're going to get that curve that looks like the hills. So for a complete rotation, it goes to maximum at 90 degrees. And then it goes to minimum again when it's horizontal at the bottom of the coil. And then as it comes back up to horizontal, it gets to a maximum. And then when it's back at vertical where it began, it's back at a minimum because it's not cutting any lines of force. So this is the EMF versus time graph for a complete rotation of the coil. Assuming in the vertical position, you are not cutting any lines of magnetic force. Okay, now it says to you an AC generator is operating at a maximum EMF of 340 volts. It's connected across a toaster and a kettle as shown in the diagram below. Well, you can clearly see that this is a parallel circuit. Okay, the toaster is rated at 800 watts while the kettle is rated at 2000 watts. Both are working under optimal conditions. So if they are working under optimal conditions, they are producing their p power here of 200 or 2000 watts for the kettle and 800 watts for the toaster and they are operating at the correct voltage to produce this okay so now it says to you calculate the rms current passing through the toaster so this is quite easy because it's a electricity calculation so if we know the voltage and we know the power we can calculate the current because you know we have this formula p average equals v times i the only problem that we have here is we do not have v rms and if you look at the app power formula it's the average power comes from the root mean square voltage times the root mean square current and they have told us the maximum emf so we have to come now and we have to use this formula over here to get VRMS because if we don't have the uh, um, RMS voltage we cannot calculate the power properly so normally when three marks there's only one calculation but here we actually have to do two but this one's not even really a proper calculation but VRMS equals Vmax over root 2 so the VRMS is going to be 340 because that's given in the question as the maximum EMF over root 2. Now this if you put it in your calculator is going to give you some weird number because you know root 2 is not a uh, it's what do you call those funny maths numbers that don't stop. Okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to use this power formula P average equals V RMS I RMS because they asked for the RMS current and we're going to say the toaster is 800 watts according to the question and then via RMS I'm just going to substitute this 340 over root 2 times I RMS and then we will get out a very accurate I RMS because we haven't rounded anything off you know how I feel about you rounding off too early in the question so this comes out to be something like 3,327 amps. So I'm going to round it as 3,33 amps. So this is the RMS current passing through the toaster. 
Now it says to you the total RMS current delivered by the generator. The problem here is, what do we know? This is a parallel circuit. And when you have a parallel circuit, a parallel circuit divides your current. So if we know in the circuit, this has got 3,33 3, amps. This has not got 3,33 amps. This kettle has got a different current flowing through it. And then if we add the 3,33 and the kettle's current, we will get the total RMS. Okay, so I total will be equal to the I RMS for the toaster plus the I RMS for the kettle. So we must now actually go and calculate the current for the kettle. So if we look at the kettle, okay, P average is equal to V RMS times I RMS. Okay, so the kettle was 2000 watts. So, so 2000 equals 340 over root two. Remember it said they're op operating optimally times I RMS. So the kettle, the kettle I RMS for the kettle is going to be uh, 8,32 amps. So the total I RMS is going to be 8,32 plus 3,33, which is going to be 11,65 amps. So remember in a parallel circuit, the current is divided and if the current is divided you have to put the two currents together to get the total current for the circuit.